So now that we've justified why we use the largest statistic decision rule, let's go ahead and start actually computing system performance. Let's actually go ahead and compute some error probabilities. So if you recall, our optimum decision rule says you need to compare square root of u0 squared plus v0 squared to the square root of u1 squared plus v1 squared, and whoever's biggest wins. We like to call this r0, and we like to call this r1, because really this looks kind of like basically the a Rayleigh random variable. When everything is Gaussian in terms of noise, which is what we always assume in this course, then what we're doing here is we're actually taking a Gaussian random variable and squaring it, another Gaussian random variable and squaring it, and then adding them together and taking the square root. So this quantity right here is always a positive quantity. It's never negative. It's always greater than or equal to zero. And in fact, when you do this operation, you actually end up with what's called a Rayleigh random variable. So that's why we call this R0 and R1 Rayleigh random variables. And our decision rule we can write in this form. I want to compare R0 to R1. And here's what we do kind of in decision and estimation theory when we have kind of hypothesis testing. We're saying is R0 greater than R1 or is R1 greater than R0? That's the question we're asking ourselves when we decode the data. So to understand these error probabilities, what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to compute these two things. Given that signal zero was sent, the prob a prob an error occurs when R0 is less than R1. That's when an error occurs. Typically, if I'm not having errors, then R0 should always be greater than R1. So the error occurs when R0 is less than R1. Similarly, when I send signal 1, an error occurs when R1 is less than R0. So when I write it this way, these probabilities look very simple to compute. But there's a very big difference compared to everything else we've done in this class. These are no longer Gaussian quantities. These are now Rayleigh random variables. So the math we're going to do to actually evaluate this probability is going to look very different from the Gaussian random variable calculations we've tended to do in this class. What we're going to do is we are going to show that these error probabilities end up looking like this. So the conditional probability of error given signal 0 was sent ends up having this form, 1 half times an exponential to the negative dot product between m0 and w0 squared divided by 2 and not the norm of w squared. And then PE1 looks very similar. So again, remember we have this w here. That is kind of the mathematical mechanism so that we could have a mismatched baseband pulse shape at our correlator. So if we wanted to model what if the correlator I'm using at the receiver is just a little bit different than the actual message baseband shape, this lets us do that. In practice, we have W0 equal M0 and W1 equal to M1, and then we have what we call an optimum correlator. There's no mismatch, so this is a is equivalent to a perfect match filter or a perfect optimum correlator. They're identical equivalent things. In that case, then this quantity turns into energy of the signal. Okay. So in the special case where we are optimum, these equations simplify quite a bit and they end up looking like this. And this is kind of neat. It's half e to the minus energy over 2 n naught, where n naught is the density of our additive white Gaussian noise. So actually, while the derivation of our largest statistic decision rule was very difficult, and the derivation of these, which we'll do next, takes a lot of math to get there, the final answer we get is actually kind of simpler than what we've had for the Gaussian case. All year, the probability of errors that we've come up with for our systems that have Gaussian noise usually involve a Q function. And a Q function is something you have to use MATLAB to evaluate or go look up at a table. This expression just has an exponential, e to the sum number. I can just do that on my basic calculator. So it's kind of funny where that all the math that we have to do for this is quite a bit more complicated for non-coherent communication, but our final answer that we get is actually one of the simplest probability of error equations that we've had all semester, and it's actually something I can do on my calculator.